the, one of the deciding factors for this game and that is going to be this pass right here i'm about to pass here which seems ridiculous hello how's it going i want to talk about a twisted fate uh in ezreal mirror matchup this is a matchup that you're not going to see very often but it's probably going to be important to talk about it i want to talk about the mulligan first of all i'm going to pause it here for a sec because i keep this entire hand it kind of goes off every other matchup why i'd consider ever keeping static shock or petty officer or this kind of expensive hand uh that is strictly because this matchup is just about pushing maximum value from every card as possible and it's a bit of mind games here so the person who starts playing units first is usually usually going to be the one that loses if i'm being honest because honestly i think you just want to be ignoring the board you kind of want to be reacting to your opponent first and whoever decides to start playing units first is probably going to be a disadvantage and it's kind of hard to it's it's you just how do i explain it like because we're both trying to level up ezreal this is similar to how karma ezreal and twist of fate plays out I'm purposely passing my turns here. It might seem a bit off and you probably don't see this very often, but this is the ways I believe you win the mirror matchup. It's all about making very strict calls and deciding on a certain game plan from the very beginning. You can argue about playing super aggressive and just like curving out completely, or you can do what I'm doing, which is the complete opposite, which is playing a little bit slower than my opponent. He plays Jacob Butcher, so I do decide to play some units. And here's where the decision making begins. So he drops a Mystic Shot. I allow it to go through. I am not going to be using my Mystic Shot to trade into his Butcher because I actually see this tough unit as a liability. Ironically, because cards like Static Shot and Make It Rain can just farm value off of it. So I want to get rid of it. He gives me the decision to trade. I'm pretty happy about that. I use my Make It Rain here. I believe Make It Rain is probably the most least valuable card most of the time with argument. But for me, if you notice, we have Riptide Rex in hand. This is a way to instantaneously level up Ezreal or push a lot of pressure against my opponent. I decided to play Butcher here because it's a 3-3. I wouldn't have played it as a 2-2 ever. As I said, pushing maximum value from our cards as possible. My opponent does use the Thermo Beam against it. This is really good for us. Immediately, I'm passing. This is going to be like the theme you're going to see quite a lot through this game. And I think it's also an important thing to talk about, guys. Like Strategic passing is a huge thing in this game, and it's probably overlooked quite a lot. My face looks really bright, but ignore me for a sec. My opponent plays Dread Ray Deckerhand. This is great. So it's all about the mind games, right? So my pass, my opponent feels like he has to play something. I punish it with Static Shock. I'm pretty happy to do that. I'm going to end the round here if possible. So I'm not too concerned about leaving that like 2-1 on the field. Even if you open attacks trying to proc plunder, I've got answers for it. So it's really no problem. He goes through the attack. I snap to Mystic Shot. I decide that Mystic Shot is not the best play here. So I use Make a Rain. As I said before, just before making the, the last Make a Rain play, that Make a Rain is the least valuable card. Plus, this turn is more reason to use it because I'm probably going to use the Pilfered Goods. Unfortunately, like I haven't got many other productive plays I want to make. I don't really want to play as Kempunks. And I think Pilfered Goods here is fine because my hand's kind of like lackluster outside of developing units from my opponent to clear. A little bit bright in the face. Close that window a little bit. So this is, uh, I'm gonna pause it here for a sec. This is um, probably one of the biggest deciding factors in the game. And here's where I start to seriously punish my opponent. As you can see, he's playing red card. I know exactly what he's about to do. He wants to like plunder so he can play like black market merchant and pilfered goods. I doubt you'd ever do that if you're just going to play Pilfered Goods. I'd argue that's a mistake, and I still think this is a mistake. As soon as I see him do this, or as I just said, I know exactly what he's about to do. So at this point, I feel like I can start developing units. So I immediately play Kempunk Pickpocket. I know exactly what he's trying to do. He plays Black Market Merchant. I'm going to follow up with the third Make It Rain that we're fortunate enough to find, which is really good here, which I already know he's going to use um, Pilfered Goods. I'd be a bit unlucky if he finds Mystic Shot here and he clears my Kempunk, but most of the time my strategy here is to leave Twist of Fate on the board by himself and I have a unit to open attack with, forcing him to have to choose to block or clear my unit with more spells. And that's exactly what we kind of do here. Now he's about to use a Mystic Shot against my Kempunk pickpocket. I kind of predicted this always, there might have been a card right to clear, it's not likely that he doesn't try and protect his Twist of Fate. So we're going to trade off Mystic Shots here. I think I'm okay with that. I realize I'm pretty sure it's his third Mystic Shot as well, if I'm not mistaken. And Mystic Shots are a really good resource. 
but I'm going to use mine. And because we're ahead on the Ezreal level, I don't feel as bad about it. We're just ahead all around. So he's going to pass to me. I'm probably going to end the turn here. And um, there's going to be a little bit more strategic passing here. First of all, I definitely end the round here for sure. We have Riptide Rex uh, warning shot unlocked. The funny thing is about Riptide Rex is like one of the most important cards in this matchup, I'd say. But you still probably do not keep it in the uh, mulligan. You probably don't like look for it. The only reason that you might consider keeping Riptide Rex in this matchup is for the chance that you find two of them. Alright here guys, I'm going to pause it here. This is um probably one of, the, one of the deciding factors for this game. And that is going to be this pass right here. I'm about to pass here, which seems ridiculous, right? I'll talk about it more in a sec. I immediately pass because I'm looking for ways to punish my opponent and make him like play into my hand, right? I telegraphed that I'm trying to set up something by this pass. Like why would I allow him to swing with his auto grifter? I'm just looking for ways, edges I can get here. I realized, and also I'll talk about the fact that um, if he wanted to plunder me this turn, he has the warning shot, so he has the ways of uh, ac uh, activating Black Market Merchant, etc. But I'm not going to allow him to like get it that easy. Or like, if he wants to play like Black Market Merchant and stuff, then I, at that point I could play Riptide Rex and clear his board. Then the weird thing he did was, is that he's like, oh, I'm going to outplay my opponent by actually passing against him, which I'd argue is a mistake, even though I'm floating a lot more mana than he is. He's the one that's behind, so he's the one that has to kind of like play a bit more aggressively, play a bit more loose and play around less cards. But he's like, oh, he probably thinks that I'm like five head for passing. So he's trying to copy me, but don't do that. I think he has to kind of play into my hand. Anyway, he does that, which is really good for us. He gets no plunders off that turn. He deals no damage. And I'm still, we're still back right back at the same spot. I immediately pass back to him. And now he's probably starting to feel a bit pressured to start playing cards. And then he kind of like plays into my hand anyway, but he's just done it one turn sooner. Then he, he does something, actually, he does something very loose here, which is kind of, I don't know. I don't know about this play. So he drops one shot plus Riptide Rex. I'm pretty happy about this. I'm pretty happy about this because he's dealing X amount of damage to my face, which is fine. He's getting no procs on his Ezreal though, which in the end, in hindsight, is not going to give him the damage that he needs anyway. I'm like super stoked about this. He's played into my hand even harder. So I'm immediately going for Riptide Rex here. No doubt about that. Huge punish to my opponent. I don't know why he didn't do a turn like this like last turn or like play a bit more loose, but um, let me just double check where the Riptide Rex come from. Must have been from the top. Yeah, it was from the top, which is fair enough. So maybe he had no merchants in hand or anything. So anyway, we go for our Riptide Rex here. I'll skip it ahead a bit. And we clear his board, Ezreal's leveled up, we just are in a super good spot and there's a high chance that this 7-4 connects to his face. If this 7-4 connects to his face, the game's over, he plays a unit, I realize I'm in a pretty good spot. I can play uh, Pilfered Goods plus um, Thermo Beam. Our decks don't have any ways to buff our units, so there's no way he can stop a 2-mana Thermo Beam. I even go a bit toxic here and play the one that I stole from his deck, which in, in a sense kind of gives him a read from my hand that he might not think about. You might not think that I have Thermo Beam since I played the one I stole from him. He goes over Pilfer Goods here. I immediately realize I'm going to be connecting the 7 4 to the face, and this is pretty much going to wrap up the game. Plus, I, st I stole a Rex from his deck, but I, would, I hope that that doesn't matter too much. I think that's a Reggie. Yeah, I definitely stole a Rex from his deck. Okay, I'm just trying to think about what he does here. At this point, he. I, I honestly don't know see how he wins, but. If you want to talk about ways that he could come back into this game, first of all, having another Rex would be good. Which is what I thought he was doing here, but then he just warning shots and passes, which is so strange. And I'm thinking, hang on, I'm pretty sure I can just play Ezreal, or Yordle Grifter first, sorry, and win this game. He wants me to play into his Riptide Rex, which at this point, I'm not really playing into it, but he had the Merchant anyway. I thought he was going for a Rex here. Anyway, we play Ezreal, and if you can work out in our hand, we do pretty much have lethal. At this point, if he plays Rex, it's lethal as well. And he does play Rex. And he's like, I got you. And I'm like, no, I, unfortunately, I've got you. Uh, the warning shot plus, I eventually figure out in a second that the mystic shot, there's no counter. There's no way he can kill my Ezreal. 
the, and, a, and a certain amount of discounted cards wouldn't even get them there. There's nothing that's below uh, one mana that can do anything. You would have had to have two two Mystic Shots discounted twice, which wouldn't have worked, or one discounted twice and one not that you stole from my deck, which you wouldn't have ever had. So that wraps up this mirror matchup. I think this is very relevant to a lot more games, a lot more matchups than just this one. This is one way you can consider piloting in it. You have to just look at what position you're in. And like, as the game goes on, you have to make a lot more snap decisions. Mirror matchups, by the way, guys, it's like one of, if not my pet peeves about any card games, I dislike them a lot. But having tech cards against the mirror is kind of a fun aspect to card games, right? So I would argue that the way I played it worked for me, but it might not work every time. You just gotta, you have to make a snap decision, a certain play, a certain strategy that you wanna like try and, uh, try and commit to. And then you'll probably find that if you stick to it, you'll have a good shot. But as I said, I think there's two ways to play it. Either play a lot more aggressive or a little bit slower. Check out this Twist of Fate and Ezreal deck guide. It'll teach you everything you need to know about the deck, all the fundamentals, the mulligan, etc. You won't miss a beat. We'll make some adjustments soon to the pilfered goods situation. Like and subscribe.